Hey everybody, it's mid-July in northern Michigan and this is the perfect time for me to take you on a little tour of hydrangeas because at this time of year I get to show you some of the early blooming hydrangeas. And when you live this far north, the earlier those hydrangeas start blooming, the longer we get to enjoy them. And let me tell you, who doesn't love enjoying a long blooming plant like a hydrangea even earlier. So I wanted to start here in front of my parents' house. If you've been to the nursery, you probably have taken a peek over at the hydrangea hedge. Uh, this was planted probably 15, 20 years ago, and they planted the old-fashioned Annabelle hydrangea. So this is an arborescent variety, or the ball shape, or smooth hydrangea. And what I love about these is that the flowers start out a really lime kind of colored green, and then they just kind of open up to a beautiful white, and then over time they're going to just gradually turn to more of a jade green. And even after the flowers are finished, you can just leave them on the plant and they still look really attractive. So that's uh, one of the nice features about this. Now this entire hedge is about 20 25 feet long and when they originally planted it I think they put about six plants here and so that's one of the characteristics of the arborescent varieties is that the clump tends to get a little bigger and bigger every year and that makes it really easy to divide if you wanted to kind of spread them out or if you leave them and you plant several together eventually those plants just grow together you can't tell where one ends and one begins so that makes you know the arborescent varieties kind of nice especially for you know using them in a way like this plus they're native so if you want to get more native plants in your yard, the arborescents are really a good way to do it. And the old-fashioned Annabelle, you can't beat it. Now some people will talk about the fact that the Annabelles are known for kind of flopping a little bit. Now we notice that more in like the first two years, uh, but arborescents tend to get better and better once they're planted in the ground. They don't like being in pots, they don't like being small, they like their time, you know, to take their time and get established, and then they tend to get stronger as they go. Now that said, if we get a hard rain, we will see the uh, flower heads kind of drop down uh, and sometimes go all the way down to the ground if it's a really heavy rain. Usually once things dry off, they kind of come back up. Um, otherwise, sometimes they do need a little bit of support. Uh, these have zero support and you can see they're just completely upright and looking really great. Uh, and the only thing we do with these is in the springtime, I give them a little bit of compost. And other than that, in the fall, we trim them right down to about six inches. And that's the only care that we do. As long as they're getting their water, they tend to do really, really great. So that's the old fashioned Annabelle arborescent hydrangea. The arborescence hydrangea has seen a couple of improvements over the years, most notably the Incredible hydrangea. So this is very similar to the Annabelle hydrangea, except the Incredible is known for its enormous flower head and having much stronger stems to be able to support that. So it's become a really popular plant. Uh, behind me is the Incredible blush. So this is the Incredible hydrangea with a bit of a pink cast to it. So just a little bit of a variation on the uh, original Incredible. Now, if I was going though for a pink hydrangea, I would probably look over to the Invincible series. So this is another series that kind of is a bit of an improvement. It doesn't get quite as big, both in the flowers and the, and the plant sizes, maybe the Incredible, but it is really exciting because it has some really nice colors in it and the, some richer colors that we're gonna see. And also it has its big flush of blooms at similar time as the Incredible and the Annabelle, but it also tends to send up a couple more blooms throughout the season. So you get a couple surprises as you go through. So when it comes to the pink arborescence, if I was picking a pink arborescence, there is the Invincible Spirit 2 is absolutely beautiful, really nice pink color. And it actually holds that pink color, I think a little bit longer than the blush does. Now, all of these will kind of change color throughout the season. So they start out uh, usually kind of with their either white or their pink, and then they do tend to change to kind of more of a jade color, but the flower heads, hey, they last right through all winter if you leave them up there. So you can enjoy them for a really long time. Now, there are a couple other kinds like the Invincible Ruby, and I love the color on this. This is much more of that kind of reddish color. It's really got an intense color, especially when it first opens or as it's opening, you get really beautiful, truly ruby color. And then it does lighten up as it's open for a little while, but I, I absolutely love the Invincible Ruby. It is a little bit smaller than the Invincible Spirit too, but uh, both of them really fantastic ones. Um, there's also like Mini Mauvette is another nice pink one as well. And then there's an interesting one called Invincible Sublime. And that one, the 
flowers stay a nice kind of lime green color and then they have a nice little pink center in them. They're just a really interesting one. They kind of have a little bit more of that kind of clumpy look to them because the flowers are just a little bit different color than the leaves. I think it's really a beautiful one and if you like kind of those green flowers or lime flowers this is really one that you're not going to want to miss. And then there is one other Invincibel that's very different from the other ones. It's called Invincibel Lace. And Invincible Lace is actually more similar to kind of the native variety, the original kind of hydrangea, because it has a lot of its, um, what are they called, the non-sterile uh, uh, florets showing. So it exposes those, and that means it's a really popular one with pollinators. So the bees really, really love Invincible Lace, and it's just got a totally different look to it. Uh, so, and that one, that's been super easy to grow. That one just tends to just take off. You don't have to do much with it at all. It's just going to do its thing. Uh, we notice it does kind of clump really nice and grow fast. It's, it's been a really, really nice one. I'm just going to touch on the Macrophylla and the Serrata hydrangeas. Those are the varieties that tend to be pink or blue depending on the acidity of the soil. Well, in our area, those varieties tend never to be early bloomers, and that's because they produce their first set of flowers usually in the fall or, or through the summer and in the fall, and then in the springtime, those flowers bloom. Well, unfortunately, we tend to get late frosts uh, and hard winters, so a lot of times those buds get nipped by the frost or they die over the winter, and so we never get that first wave of blooms. Now that said, this is an Endless Summer original. It's a Macrophylla hydrangea that bloomed the first two years my parents planted it, and this was probably about 20 years ago when this went in. And since then, if it's had 14 flowers over the course of the last, say, 15 years, I'd be surprised. Well, last year I decided I am taking it out. It's not doing anything. I can put something in there that's going to bloom more and look at it this year. It decided must have heard me because it just started producing all these flowers this year. And what's more incredible is I did nothing with it. I did not give it any fertilizer. In fact, I avoided doing any trimming on it. Even when it started leafing out, I was like, you're going out pretty soon. I'm not going to touch you. And hey, it looks absolutely stunning this year. Now, there are some other varieties that I've had better luck with. This might be a fluke, but maybe it's a new trend. Maybe we're going to be start seeing this in the summer every year. That would be really fantastic. There's hope for you yet. Uh, so I'm going to show you some other varieties too. This is the Let's Dance Can Do, and it's a Serrata hydrangea, which is a mountain hydrangea. So these tend to be a little bit hardier than the Macrophyllas. And what's really exciting is that this is the second year that I've had this one in a grow bag. And what's great about that is that's probably the most extreme condition that a hydrangea can be put in, is just putting it in the winter uh, into a grow bag. This one has made it through two winters, and look at the flowers on it. It's absolutely stunning. So I've had really good luck with this uh, Let's Dance Can Do and Let's Dance Ariba. Both of those have been fantastic. This is the Summer Crush Macrophylla Hydrangea from Endless Summer, and this one has done pretty good for us. Uh, it's just starting to bloom, so when it fills in, all the petals are going to turn a really beautiful dark, dark pink or a dark purple. So this one's a lot darker than some of the other varieties. But this one has been coming back for us really well, and it might be because we've been planting it in a full sun area, something I'm not sure what the secret is, but this one has been performing a little better. We've had pretty good luck with the Bloomstruck and also with the Twist and Shout as well. But still, Macrophyllas still are kind of our, our hardest ones for us to be able to get really great flowers, especially early early flowers off of. Now I want to tell you all about the early blooming paniculata hydrangeas. Now paniculata means it has panicle shaped blooms or cone shaped flowers and those are the ones that usually start out white and then they kind of uh, blush to either a pink or a red or a burgundy depending on the variety and the conditions that it's in. So the most famous early blooming panicle is the quick fire. So the quick fire, this is one right here, you can see it has kind of more of a lace cap, more of that open kind of uh, flower and it's known not only for blooming early but also so it changes color really early and if I look inside here a lot of the petals are already starting to show kind of signs of their kind of red and burgundy colors so uh, that's one thing about this one is that it is a way ahead of all the other uh, different uh, hydrangeas that are out there as, as far as paniculata now the other thing I like about the quick fire is it has a little different habit than some of the other varieties so it's more I'm gonna say compact and tidy so its branches are tighter its leaves tend to be really dense and full and it just keeps that nice kind of mounded habit 
and it makes it really easy when it comes time to trim it back in the fall because you're just going to kind of follow where the leaf sets end and you don't really have to think about it whereas some of the other varieties you're kind of looking at branches and they kind of go in different directions this one is really nice and tidy now the regular quick fire does get like to a full size hydrangea size you know up to what is it six feet or taller I'm not I can't remember uh, but they also have little quick fire and tiny quick fire and I think tiny quick fire is like under three feet so you can get it in a couple different sizes I did notice that the dwarf varieties tend to bloom a little bit later than the the original so you are making that little trade-off but still incredible kind of lineup and they also have another one called quick fire fab now the flower is very different because it's more uh, like the traditional cone shape that you're maybe more familiar with and that one I gotta say this one is tops in my book because not only does it bloom right alongside the quick fire really really early but it transitions to one of the most hot pink colors of any hydrangea really intense color on it absolutely stunning so it gets that early bloom changes to an unbelievable color it's it, it is really nice and it's a full-size hydrangea so it it looks really really nice so the quick fire series is really really nice but it's not the only early blooming hydrangeas this is the bobo hydrangea and it stays under three feet tall but it's known for this incredible flower coverage I mean this literally looks like someone took 50 stems of hydrangeas and just put them in a pot it is unbelievable how many flowers on here now these flowers they blush to just a light pink so it doesn't get the intense colors that you're going to find on some of the other hydrangeas but to get an early bloomer with this much flowers it's unbelievable and it stays so small that you can use it in places that maybe you couldn't put a traditional large hydrangea so it's it's a really unusual one it has a cousin called the puffer fish which is a little bit bigger uh, both the plants bigger and like the petals are bigger and the flowers are bigger uh, and that one is very interesting because it's just starting to bloom so it's a little bit behind the bobo but it's known for first of all it doesn't blush it stays white and then it goes to lime and just when you think it's done that bloom starts sending out more flowers from the end and so it'll have a whole new set of white blooms off of the old flower so it's just got some unique characteristics I'm looking forward to seeing it because it's brand new so I haven't had a chance to see it in action but pufferfish is one that I'm going to definitely be watching another early bloomer is the firelight hydrangea this one as you can see already starting to get this large flower panicle the other thing about this one is that it will start getting its color and the color tends to be more of the reds and burgundies so if you're not into the hot pinks and the bright pinks uh, these more reds and, and burgundy colors maybe are going to be more for you and so this one has all that and again large flower panicle beautiful blooms on this one and it gets covered with them so i, I really like the firelight and there are a lot of hydrangeas following closely behind like this white diamonds hydrangea there's also the vanilla strawberry strawberry sundae berry white diamond rouge pinky winky those are all pretty far along they're not quite as far as the ones I showed you but they're really really starting to put on their blooms so we're, it's just really nice to see that uh, you might notice that there's one hydrangea that is noticeably missing from my list and it's the one that is probably the most famous and it's the one people ask for by name and that's the limelight hydrangea and then it's kind of smaller cousin the little lime and that's because when it comes to panicle hydrangeas the limelight series tends to be the latest blooming so uh, they're just starting to show signs of buds whereas all these other ones kind of have buds or flowers already showing uh, now there is some exceptions to that because there are two new uh, members of the limelight family that are starting to produce their flowers so the limelight prime and little lime punch are ahead of the original limelight so it's very clear that as these uh, breeders are developing more hydrangeas they are taking early bloom time into consideration because all of the newest varieties seem to have early blooming kind of as part of what comes with them and I really do appreciate it because we have a short season so the longer we get to enjoy these hydrangeas definitely the better so I hope this video helps you and kind of inspires you and gets you some ideas of maybe what some of the early blooming varieties because for the most part people only know about limelight and maybe vanilla strawberry those are kind of the two that people ask for by name uh, but all these other varieties are kind of nice surprises so if you can get your hands on some of these I think you'll be really really pleased